there is a small suggestion to um, intersperse or rather uh, sprinkle the talk with little bit of Hindi at times, 30% so to say, I'll try. I just offered to her, I don't know uh, if that's her wish, it will flow with that way. We have a linear vision, so our understanding of life, of events, circumstances is linear. It moves on one plane, so to say. And mostly that plane is the physical plane. But the divine vision is a global vision. It, it is all comprehending and that is why we find that the, the stories, the poems, the epics written by the seers, it moves on many planes at the same time. So there are three planes at which we can comprehend such writings. One is of course at a very outer plane, the plane of the story as it moves, develops, evolves, the characters and there is a great beauty in that. It itself has a liberating effect because it's not somebody's ordinary person's life but the life of someone who has risen to greatness and glory. At a deeper level it's a symbolic. Symbol is still not the real but the story represents something, the symbol is something which represents the real. And the closer the symbol can reproduce the real, the more uh, authentic and lasting that story is. For instance, Mahabharata at once moves on an outer plane as well as as a symbol. That's why it is so still alive inside us. Still we enjoy. There is a whole new series of Mahabharata coming up. Um, I'm not advertising for it. Nobody has approached me, but I just love it. It's so interesting, you know, fascinating to watch it again, all over again, so many times. And every time people have wanted to modernize it or give it a modern turn thinking it would be more appealing, they have massacred it. Because it's not a story which is written on one plane. It's written by the seer vision of Vyasa or say the seer vision of Valmiki or even a Kalidas. It moves on so many planes and uh, when we try to just take out one issue, let's say a social aspect and try to put it, give it a very modern version, we miss it because the soul of the story is missing. So we've seen Savitri again, the quest is about outwardly, Ashupati has had a vision, he hears a voice, Akashwani, that Savitri has come for a work, a mission, and to fulfill that mission, she must find someone with whom this great work has to be done. That someone is Satyavan. And the father tells her, to go out and seek that someone. So outwardly it's a story where a girl who has come of age is going to find her bridegroom. And as we were discussing yesterday, it's, it was the custom in India that a woman went and found the bridegroom. Maybe because they are more intuitive, less likely to mess up because of the mental analysis and uh, maybe less calculating. <laughs> Though unfortunately today things have changed and something in the heart, a light which can show who is the right person. But it's not about right and wrong, it's about a growth. And the mother has revealed to us what is the truth of a relationship which we see now coming up in quest and subsequent cantos. That man, there is a low pitch of everything which is like a shadow. So human life can be lived at a very low pitch. And this pitch is when we live by the ego and desire and so also human relationship can be lived at a very low pitch where there is nothing else but mutual satisfaction of desire for the sake of ego. Ahankar or kamnao ke liye ek jivan. Wo ek bahut nimnishreni ka jivan hai. As the mother puts it so beautifully that um, men become slave to a woman because of three things. One, the desire to have sexual relation. Second is the uh, need to possess and dominate somebody over whom I can exercise absolute control. And the third, thank God women are liberated from that anyways. And the third is the uh, desire for small satisfactions of uh, conjugal life. What are these small satisfactions? When a man comes home, he throws the bag, throws his socks, throws everything and says, I want to have a cup of tea. 
<laughs> as if he has done a great job god knows conquered some big empire and now he needs he is in his estate he is the emperor and you know the woman must serve when mother was asked about this mother um, scolded a, a man disciple what women should cook for men why should she do it she was not in favor of women cooking for men all their life so that also is gone fortunately partly because of technology and partly because of necessity so women are no more required to cook for men so this frees human nature and men become ready for a higher pitch of relationship so women also become slaves to men again she says because of three things attachment to motherhood it's something so special and mother used to remind when some uh, girls as here itself they would want to experience motherhood and she would say you have to decide whether you want to lend your body to this purposes or for a higher purpose so this was an attachment to motherhood which was very strong the second is the sense of security it's very unfortunate and so good again that women do not need a man for security in fact very often nowadays men need a woman to be secure so <laughs> durga and kali but this used to be ingrained that you know she will be insecure what will happen to her life see how the yuga is changing very often people ask what are the signs that the supramental age is near here is the sign we see this emancipation of women and men at a deeper level and of course at a third level there was this sense of dependency the comfort that comes from being within certain confines and these were all social nothing but social pressures otherwise both have the same soul soul has no gender and it's only in nature that the differentiation of the masculine and the feminine is there in the soul itself there is no gender so that truth is being revealed to us and savitri is not an ordinary mortal she is not looking for a bridegroom just so that she can have a uh you know um, what is that five figure or six figure salary and good bank balance and have a you know uh, she she's not looking for that she's looking for something else and that is revealed in in the canto quest but at another level it's a symbolic story when shorbindu was asked what is the truth behind gopis and krishna their relationship we have so much nonsense being uh, written even recently there was this book uh, by Uh, this lady of infamous name best not mentioned and best forgotten uh, about krishna and the gopis and shurbindu says krishna and the gopis relation is essentially the relation of the soul turning towards the divine they feel the call they rush they are mad they forget everything they are intoxicated with the sweetness of bhakti they know nothing else they abandon everything utter naked they put themselves before the divine not even a cloth of virtue to hide themselves and they abandon themselves this is how the soul must connect to the divine so this is the symbol of the story and here in quest the symbol is the divine looking for the instrument which would serve her purpose so she has to serve the purpose and uh, the the great uh, she has to do the great work and she must find human instruments without that this work cannot be fulfilled so she goes in search of those human instrument at one place the mother speaks about it one personality however great he may be or she may be is not enough for the transformation there has to be a certain number of people who are ready to become representatives in this great uh, wonderful delightful dangerous game divine so savitri the divine mother she is in search of the human instruments but first she must recover all that she has done in the past in each journey of the divine there are humanity progresses up to a point and certain things happen then those forces which are unleashed are left in earth nature as a quivering trace as a memory and when the divine comes again he must gather all those elements once again and take them to a next higher level it is symbolized in the story of um, rama and krishna before we start further kahani ka ye thoda स्लो करने से बेटर है बट वॉट टू डू सो द स्टोरी इज दैट रामा वेन ही कॉन्कर्स रावणा सो रावणा हैज यू नो द सो मेनी विडोज आर देयर एंड एज इज द कस्टम दे से वी वॉन्ट टू मैरी यू रामा सेज आई कैनॉट डू इट आई हैव कम टू एस्टैब्लिश सत्वा 
So no, but you have to do it. You have conquered. Now we are without a king, without anyone to support us. You have to marry us. So Rama says, in this life I cannot do it, but I'll do it in my next avatar. Actually, outwardly it looks very that okay, Krishna had sixteen thousand wives, but it's not not at all. There were energies which were suddenly released after the killing, slaying of the asura, and these energies came to Rama literally. That what do we do? We were tied to the asura. Is there a way out for us? And obviously, Rama, the Satvik avatar, at the level of the Satvik illumined mind, it's not possible to find a resolution. So he must come back as Krishna, take these energies again into himself, those asuric energies which are left upon earth, and take them up to the next level through his next incarnation. So that's what we are reading. The world is open before Savitri. Page, page three seven seven. How beautiful one liner. the world is a mask of the divine and as we go through the world there is a divine action which works upon us unknowing that's why people by the time they have white hairs they grow wise at least they are supposed to grow wise if they don't grow wise till they have white hair then they grow bald and then they grow wise because wisdom comes even if we don't seek it that's the beauty of life संसार की यात्रा में ही ज्ञान आता है आप सीख करो या ना करो कहाँ से आता है अंदर से आता है सो दिस इज द वर्ल्ड वेज एट फर्स्ट ए स्ट्रेंजनेस ऑफ न्यू ब्रिलियंट सीन्स पीपल डर माइंड एंड केप्ट हर बॉडीज गेज बट एज शी मूव्ड अक्रॉस द चेंजिंग अर्थ ए डीपर कॉन्शियसनेस वेल्ड अप इन हर सो एज शी मूव्स सी एक्सपीरियंसेस हु शी रियली इज दिस वॉज हैपनिंग from very beginning but as she moves through the, through these uh, different lands meets different people she experiences things is very differently so mother says ek bar once uh, lot of people had come and they were dining together and she was very young and uh, she was sitting and suddenly she started experiencing totally a different uh, state of consciousness and she felt amused that people are dressed in suit and tie and they are sitting uh, stiffly and very well behaved very well mannered so mother uh, felt amused people feel, used to feel this is a custom this is very nice and she started laughing almost uncontrollably and uh, her mother didn't understand obviously that what has happened to my daughter because normally uh, she mother describes herself as a very shy nature till almost 20 she would hardly speak first time she speaks uh, almost a full lecture is when she is uh, with abdul baha who asked him to her to speak so she was shy nature suddenly my daughter is laughing at the dinner table this is not good manners so later on she asked her that you seem to be behaving very strangely i think you need a doctor who should give you pills actually her mother felt that she is losing her mind whereas actually she was rediscovering her mind she was rediscovering her greater self so at this deeper consciousness which begins to experience life very differently and what does she discover a citizen of many scenes and climes each soil and country it had made its home it took all clans and peoples for her own till the whole destiny of mankind was hers this is how the divine is when in one of our um, notes 1912 and i have a suspicion may or may not be true that this note she must have written around the same time when abdul baha wanted her to speak because she used to go regularly for his meetings because she found them interesting so he may have thought i don't know she he may have thought that she is like she is fond of my teachings and she is taken to this sect so one day when he was sick she he asked her to speak she said i am not interested in anything of your sect so why are you asking me to speak so it was amazing that she used to attend those meetings but she was not interested in those she said i don't believe in these doctrines so he said doesn't matter you speak so she says i used to go because he was a very genuine and sincere person he sought the divine with great sincerity and great simplicity that she admired so 
she writes in one of her notes i do not belong to any civilization nation race or society but to the divine i obey no master no rule no social convention no law except the divine since the beginning of the earth i have been a servant of the god and spoken always in his name and i'll continue to do so but to speak in the name of a doctrine is impossible then she says the eternal transcendence forbids me she cannot speak in the name of a doctrine a sect because she belongs to no 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 nation can claim her and that's why at one point even about her books the mother says at one place what is all this that you want me to claim that these are my books i don't believe in these things when people asked her for copyright issues she says i don't believe in these things i don't believe in legal documents it was a big difficulty <laughs> when government of india asked which nationality <laughs> and we have many of us have read that passage then she says well if they insist on asking and want to put something right indian because her soul is indian but she doesn't belong to any no nation no civilization can appropriate her these unfamiliar spaces on our way were known and neighbors to a sense within landscapes record like lost forgotten fields cities and rivers and plains her vision claimed like slow recurring memories in front these are real experiences of the mother so many of them imagine the divine in previous lives what she has not gone through as mary antoinette she has gone through the guillotine can we ever imagine as another she doesn't even re remember the name she doesn't sp speak the name she says i went to italy and they were showing a place and then there was a canal flowing down and suddenly the whole scene changed and she saw everybody gathered there in king louis 14's dress and then she remembered a scene where um, this was a prison and the um, when the next man changed uh, in charge of the prison he felt threatened by the previous in charge son he thought he will take over and so he planned to kill him whereas his own daughter loved this boy so she wants to save him and when the father came to know of this plan he strangled his own daughter and threw her into the canal who was the daughter a previous incarnation of the divine mother can we imagine this some of our incarnations there are movies made uh, and even um, this famous shakespeare's love's labor lost is based on one of her previous experiences so she has experienced suddenly these things would come rushing and she would identify when someone was going to the himalayas she says oh i have seen myself in a vision 2 years ago lying in one of the caves in the himalaya petrified by the springs it was uh, just as in ancient egypt they used to experiment with uh, body consciousness and therefore they used to mummify so that the central consciousness can remain intact it was the first occult experiment at physical transformation they really believed that one day the king will come alive it was a belief that if we can keep the body preserved for a sufficiently long period of time one day they will come alive now of course we may uh, not understand it in that way in india similar experiments were done they are not documented in this way and the mother says they were they used to keep the body in the himalayas that's why they used to keep themselves in the caves or wahan par jo springs hain jo natural healing minerals hain uske paas body ko rakhte the jisse ye sharir एक लंबे समय तक सेलुलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रिमेन्स एंड सी सेज टिल नाउ दैट बॉडी इज प्रिजर्व थाउजेंड इयर्स बैक सो शी हेज एक्सपीरियंसड ऑल दीज थिंग्स एंड शी वॉज गैदरिंग ऑल दिस टू टेक इट टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल सो दो दे अपियर अनफेमिलियर येट दे वेर फेमिलियर लाइक ए डिज अव देन वी ए ब्यूटिफुल लाइन्स द स्टार सेट नाइट वेयर हर पास्ट ब्रिलियंट फ्रेंड्स हाउ ब्यूटिफुल टू इमेजिन the stars have watched over all of us through uh, millenniums the winds murmured to her of ancient things 
and she met nameless comrades loved by her once so they are they were all aspects of herself and that the avatar gathers within herself nobody is abandoned even across spans of thousands of years what a relief hum log doubt karte hain acha abhi to ma nahi hai abhi kya hoga next life mein kya hoga divine never never abandons we have stories how beautiful that story of amrita when um, in she was john of arc and how he was one of the priests aur jab ma ko jala rahe the when she was being burnt at the stake he felt this is unfair this is not done he did not say anything she was asking for the cross but everybody had declared she is a uh, heretic and she must be burnt at the stake obviously it was all doctored and uh, manipulated and then he couldn't stand it he took a straw made a little cross and threw it into the fire that she is looking for a cross and i must do it his heart must have been moved by some great compassion so many hundreds of years passed the divine recognizes brings him back or shurbindo's own life as paris and how hector fought bravely to defend his younger brother and he died and what a death being taken around the palace seven times by echlis his body is not given a burial and the father has to come and plead for 12 days he was kept like that and who was hector shurbindo writes in one of his uh, notes uh, dilip kumar roy hector of course dilip kumar roy didn't like it when he came to know about it what i was dragged around the palace and you carry these memories even in the future she carried she said still that fire and that guillotine she could still remember it in down the so divine never forgets even a smallest gesture if one has felt once in the heart for the divine even as a little squirrel this is what the story means it's not that squirrels all squirrels are sacred of course i take it like that the other day inside the ashram a squirrel fell on my um, head and i said very good just before the savitri class squirrel has been blessed by the lord <laughs> so no harm in believing that there is this comes as a blessing but the point is that however small our our feeling for the lord he notices it that's what should be the sage in the synthesis the divine knows himself in the heart of the seeker so here she is everything that she had loved people had forgotten but she remembered another story of a little boy american boy who came two and a half three years old and he is very naughty boy and uh, suddenly she saw him and the memory came back what was the memory she heard a sentence amen hotep and then there is a sentence i have forgotten this is just one sentence. and i remembered that i was his mother and he was amen hotep in that life so even what we know even what for he did he was remarkable for our uh, if i am not mistaken maybe the last one after that tutan khamen and everything was gone but he was the one who created many the worship of the sun god before that there were many gods and yesterday we spoke about it he established vedanta in egypt and she was his mother and she say, and then she says oh he was very naughty quite a difficult child so even that she remembered that he was a difficult child so this is how she gathered them back all was a part of old forgotten selves vaguely or with a flash of sudden hints her acts recalled a line of bygone power even her motions purpose was not new at one place she says that every time the divine takes on a material body it is with the sole aim of transformation har bar bhagwan chahte hain ye mortal material sharir transform ho jaye but it is also true that every time he had to return back without the task being complete it is stamped in the memory of the race as certain stories like rama touching the shila shila ko paon se chhu kar ke wo devi ban gaye its matter being redeemed assuming its divine status or krishna touching kubja the ugly and she changes into a beautiful maiden so these stories are there stamped in the memory of the race that the divine comes basically to transform matter but it has not been achieved so 
even the purpose of her motion was not new traveler to a prefigured highway now unrolls the scroll of destiny outwardly savitri doesn't know whom she is going to meet and looks like she is just going to find a comrade a partner but everything has been decided foreseen prefigured and it's not an ordinary event it's a high event she seemed to her remembering witness soul to trace again a journey often made so this is not the first time that the divine mother is born on earth and seeking for her lord we have in our myths and legend so many stories particularly in the stories of shiva uh, how lives after lives they come assuming different forms and sometimes it is the lord who becomes ignorant helpless weak and must find that power and some at other times he is discover he is in his transcendent self and the divine mother becomes ordinary human mortal tries to please him it's the story of the soul and nature at one level and the slow story of the lord and his shakti they must come together again and again but every time the world forces deny it so even though her purpose motion of her purpose is not new probably for the first time this event may take place in with rama and sita they came together they separated they came together they separated with krishna radha never came together and that's why when mother finally came to pondicherry in 1920 she said a concrete sign of the victory over adverse forces they don't want this to happen because if they come together it's a great power it's nature doing full circle and returning back to the lord in chinese it's the dragon eating the uh, touching the tail a guidance turned the dumb revolving wheels these lines are wonderful and uh, i had the great fortune of uh, opening these lines when uh, i was rather forced to buy a car so and uh, just read something from savitri so when i opened these lines came <laughs> and though they relate to the inner life but they uh, they suited so well to the situation a guidance turned the dumb revolving wheels so we think we are the driver in the seat and then there is a driver at the seat there is a back seat drivers and there are many drivers simultaneously shobinda will reveal to us but who is the real driver the divine chariot here a guidance turned the dumb revolving wheels and in the eager body of their speed the dim mast hooded godheads road who move a sign to man immutably from his birth receivers of the inner and outer law at once the agents of his spirit's will and witnesses and executors of his fate deep occult truths we are never alone a whole lot of beings around us depending upon where we stand in the evolution that is the nature of these beings and they move with us and they help or hinder and we call them and the spirit goes through the goes through that experience they also fulfill a purpose we read about that uh, much earlier in book 1 canto 9 or 10 where these beings who are fulfilling shobindu says tools of the unknown and they weave for us the fate so sometimes they will put a bandage over the eye and one meets an accident most of the time we are driven by such beings because we are full of desires excitement restless angry even when we are driving that is the big rakshasa drawn um, made in that park i don't know whether he is still there or not for long time i haven't been no more there he's gone so there was a being who used to create accidents so <laughs> who who would make us feel oh go faster 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 and then suddenly one is very confident and he puts a blinder so that's one kind of that's a low kind of guidance but there is another kind of guidance forces that help and even when something is going to happen which is adverse they come and take stop you and we have that classic uh, experience which is described in both mother and shobindo's life shobindo's life when he was in baroda and suddenly the chariot uh, those wheels it was about to crash that carriage 
and suddenly he saw a great luminous being come out and hold the reins and he has immortalized it in his poem the godhead and a great accident tragedy would have been averted so that is also there like udarda a whole train accident how the mother would stop because there is a kind of guidance which goes so there are all kinds of forces and beings in mother's life when she slipped and fell and she suddenly experienced somebody carrying her and placing her softly on the ground so we are never alone and even as savitri is going chance accidents meetings everything there is a purpose in that inexorably faithful to their task they hold his nature sequence in their guard carrying the unbroken thread old lives have spun so these beings are there with us and waiting for their moment attendants on his destiny's measured walk leading to joys he has won and pains he has called even in his casual steps they intervene another place there is a line where shobindo says there is a meaning in each curve and line nothing is random in this play it looks random it looks like an accident but there is a purpose in everything chance encounters new doors sudden treading of old paths all this is part of a grand plan we cannot imagine or conceive and since we do not know the coordinate so we think ye iske karan ho gaya wo uske karan ho gaya is accident ka ye karan tha uska ye karan tha bimar ho gaya kyunki meetha zyada kha liya bahut log meetha hi khate hain lekin diabetes nahi hota hai kuch logon ko ho jata hai so people say genetics what is genetics that means you were born with the seeds of a possibility and there is a time i hope there is no doctor listening because he'll massacre me with all his doctor logic at <laughs> this my theory is not standardized it's not scientifically proven because there is no instrument but i believe that people come with certain seeds nobody knows why at a certain age genetic switch gets on <laughs> so my own theory is that there are destiny's curves things we have to experience and we wait and there is a point it can get switched off switched on sometimes yes it can get switched off also things can change because it's a very complex play of forces and the most random things are plans of that great event so even in his casual steps they intervene tempted to share a small little story of uh, how i turn people ask how you turn to mother and shubhendu it's amazing that moving in knot place delhi aimlessly literally aimlessly loitering whiling away time because there is two hours to catch some train or something oh no not to train but just two hours like that and suddenly i see a book shop whose name is book warm what a uh, funny name and um, uh, i just go inside and uh, as i am inside suddenly my eyes fall upon a book the synthesis of yoga sri aurobindo i wonder who is this i have not read i have read all yogis i thought but how come i have not read so i take out and open the page and it is written all life is yoga so i have not read anything but i feel this is what i am seeking if i knew what i am seeking that time then maybe i would have thought about it but how it happens and suddenly that casual passing phrase changes your life it's the scroll of destiny where did one find it not in a hermitage not while hearing some nice satsang in a busy market place full of desire the lot comes amal kiran recounts how he walks into a shoe shop to find a pair of shoes and it's wrapped in a newspaper where there is an article all against shirobindo actually that article is <laughs> not speaking highly of shirobindo it's demeaning shirobindo and seeing that article he gets fascinated probably if the article was all glorifying him like you know goody goody he may not have felt attracted he says that attracted me who is this i must see him and those pair of shoes how beautifully described became for him the shoes to carry him all the way to the lord's feet so how even in the most casual steps destiny operates 
and it changes all future life nothing we think or do is void or vain so karma is not just about action but thoughts feelings everything each is an energy loosed and holds its course of course we need not get frightened most of these thoughts feelings are so casual they come like if you are within bubbles and they just dissolve but something which is very strong insistent like a tendency in the nature is there it may not get fulfilled in this life but it must come back it will come back it seeks resolution it is a part of our own nature and we cannot completely cut it off for the fullness of the realization the shadowy keepers of our deathless past have made our fate the child of our own acts and from the furrows labored by our will we reap the fruit of our forgotten deeds so bad we can't blame god <laughs> but we should rejoice because shivendra says our destiny is written in double terms even though whether it seems good or evil to men's eyes through both we move nearer to god so these are the double aspect of destiny on one side there are events and circumstances happenings which must take place because there are certain energies which have gone into play even when we don't want it there is a very nice story of a person who heard that if we do tapasya we will get money so he realized that instead of doing anything let me do tapasya so some of these beggars are actually doing tapasya poor fellows day and night are doing this tapasya probably they could do a job and get much more easily so anyways this man started doing tapasya and to please goddess lakshmi he got so involved so engrossed after 10 years lakshmi appears and says yes my child yes mother i am enthralled by the, your vision you want money she says what no you want money i have forgotten all about it i am just raptured by this wonderful vision but because there is something he has asked for it must come even the smallest of energies that is how even in again the ramayana and bhagavat there is connecting story these are stories to indicate this tendency that angad though he followed lord rama so faithfully but one grouse he carries in its heart though his mother has told him that never leave his company he is the one who will take care of you not only outwardly but also inwardly because he knew what bali is but he carries that grouse that after all he killed my father ravana tries to play up on it so when he goes as an emissary of lord rama he says what you want to defend that man who killed your dad but bali remains faithful the yeah, angad remains faithful but he carries that little seed so in the next life that seed must find its fruition how does it find its fruition so when krishna is resting he is become a hunter he looks at that little eye on his feet and thinks it is a deer and shoots an arrow and becomes an instrument to kill krishna and then he goes near and says i am so sorry i did this to you and uh, he says no 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 it was destined it had to happen like that now you are free and then krishna entrust his own body to him for generations they carry the relics of krishna so it is amazing how destiny works in so many ways that each is an energy loosed and holds its course what draupadi desired was a perfect man she could not be satisfied because she lived loved only krishna and there could be no one man another equal of krishna and krishna cannot marry draupadi because he has a different mission to fulfill and yet he calls her his sakhi she is his consort in the kurukshetra without draupadi there is no fulfillment of the purpose of krishna even if arjuna is there he would be powerless so draupadi is meant to be with these pandavas but draupadi loves krishna so she gets five husbands each one representing one aspect of the godhead 
so this is how each energy finds its own culmination and fulfillment but since unseen the tree that bore this fruit and we live in a present born from an unknown past they seem but parts of a mechanic force to a mechanic mind tied by earth's laws yet are the instruments of a will supreme washed by a still all seeing i above so it looks mechanical it happened because of this some external reason i have read this story and uh, i tried to verify its authenticity but anyways as the mother says that's not so important she says that in one of her talks what is important is the truth which is being conveyed and she says many of these legends are far more useful for man's progress than the so called historical facts and things didn't always happen the way historians recount she has spoken of that we'll come to that some other time but the story is about shurbindo and uh, once krishna swami ayer came along with his younger brother and uh, he sees him and says oh so you were so and so maratha general long back and um, he he listened to it and then he says to his brother later on what is this he told me that i was a maratha general by so and so name what is the proof so his brother went and asked shurvindo sir my brother is asking for a proof i trust you but he wants a proof oh proof tell him after 20 years he'll die at the same spot how does he die he is in delhi very nice moving around sandy has a heart attack and he is taken to a hospital that hospital is where the that maratha general was imprisoned and eventually he died left his body there he was imprisoned by the moguls and he died there so how there is a total vision which the divine has but we cannot see it so we think earth's laws are purely mechanical it is simply because this happened therefore that happened therefore this happened therefore that happened and along with that there is a reconciliation of many personalities half finished lines of evolution which we carry in our soul because they have to find their own fulfillment that's why the mother and shobindo tell us repeatedly do not judge we don't know what is happening in each one how complex this human life is we'll stop with just a few lines this similar thought is given elsewhere on page 12 the issue the same truth for only the unborn spirits timeless power page 12 can lift the yoke imposed by birth in time only the self that builds this figure of self can raise the fixed interminable line that joins these changing names these numberless lives these new oblivious personalities and keeps still lurking in our conscious acts the trail of old forgotten thoughts and deeds disown the legacy of our buried selves so they are there buried inside they wait for their hour all these uh, unfinished curves of evolution in one life we walk a certain type of evolutionary journey and it stops in another life we take it in different way all these stopped and then in shobindo's yoga it is put on a fast forward track accelerated mode so it is like many lifetimes we start living in one lifetime it can be disorienting but there is no other way the burdensome hardship to our vanished forms so we are not just hires of the present but of the past accepted blindly by the body and soul an episode in an unremembered tale its beginning lost its motive and plot concealed that's why we don't understand what is the meaning of these events is it my fault somebody else's fault always we must find somebody's fault but fortunately the divine doesn't see these things as a fault 
he simply sees things as an evolutionary lines and he takes it to its complete fulfillment sometimes even to absurd levels asuras must find somebody asks the why does divine give all these boons to the asuras he says that is the fastest way to take them on evolution <laughs> because they meet the nemesis and come out we know how the fourth veda came into existence maybe after the break we'll talk about that accepted blindly by the body and soul an episode in an unremembered tale its beginning lost its motive and plot concealed a once living story has prepared and made our present fate child of past energies so we are the authors of our fate and this actually is not fatalism it is empowerment we can accept or refuse the fate this comes later on this truth will be revealed in book 6 fate will present things somebody asked shubindu if everything is determined like that then what is the role of human beings he says consent one word consent and even the divine accepts it someone asked him during the evening talks i think it was dr manilal sir why you have to undergo this fracture prarabd karma or what and shurbindo says maybe but how can it be sir how can you have any prarabd karma he says how do you know it's amazing what the lord takes upon himself for the lord the entire creation is a prarabd karma <laughs> that he doesn't reveal because creation is an act of god and every problem and difficulty of creation is his karma that's the secret in gita in one line it is revealed it says visarga its creation is his karma so the burden of creation and all its past issues problems difficulties are the karma of the lord it's the cosmic karma that he carries and travels so of course the divine lord our master shurbindo he is very humble so he stopped baffling mani lal's mind what did he mean by saying that my karma he didn't say that i am carrying the karma of the whole creation because creation is my act and i must take that karma on my head and fulfill it so we'll stop here for 10 minutes and come back and continue the law of karma <laughs>